How's it going? Don't answer that. I can't heal you. This is a podcast. I recorded this in the past. It is not live. That is not how podcasts operate. This podcast is titled Ghoulish, and I am Max Booth, a host. You will now listening to an episode, episode 79 to be exact, with special guest B. All Yeagle, who wrote a magnificent novel called Negative Space that I cannot recommend enough. I won't shut up about it on social media. It is a great novel. We talk about that book in this podcast, but most importantly, we talk about uh, B. All Yeagle's home state of Massachusetts. I I realize I maybe mispronounced several uh, words in this introduction, including the state of Massachusetts and also the the author's last name. If so, I apologize. I do not know how to talk like most normal human beings. It is called a speech impediment. On this episode of Ghoulish, he uh, joins me to talk about his home state. He joins me to talk about all the spooky things that have happened in this state, including several uh, possibly haunted attractions. I don't know. It's, we get into some odd uh, odd discussions about uh, abandoned uh, tunnels and crazy bridges and all types of cool spooky stuff. I've never uh, visited Massachusetts, and I, I'm not going to now because I think I would die if I did. So if you haven't read Negative Space, I think you should go do that. It's a great book, great guest, great podcast. This was a fun discussion. I think you should listen to it. And then when you finish listening to it, you should just sit back and sigh once only one sigh and think wow what a what a good podcast i just listened to and then after that i don't know tell uh tell some friends about it and say hey you need to you need to go uh download this podcast and listen to it as well maybe leave a review on the the places you do that i don't know maybe go do the laundry Wash the dishes that are piling up in your kitchen. Do you have a kitchen? What are you, rich? You can afford to have a kitchen? Um, If you can afford to have a kitchen, you can afford to uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. I am done talking in this introduction because it's time at long last to get on with the episode at hand spooky massachusetts with bl yagle <laughs> so when you, t- when you tell me the uh, the idea you had for this episode, you said uh, some spooky, creepy Massachusetts stuff. And I thought, is that real negative space takes place? Because I, it's been a while since I've read it now, but I don't remember the exact setting beyond like a small town. Right. Well, well, it takes place in New Hampshire, um, where I've never lived, but it's it's really close by. Um, I, I've worked there. Um, I have I have family who's in uh, New Hampshire, um, and I, I, I kind of a lot of the inspiration, uh, the events comes from things and places that have happened uh, in Massachusetts. But I kind of felt the need to set it in New Hampshire um, because New Hampshire still feels a little bit more mysterious to me it's a little bit more uh verdant and uh slightly more like sinister and like off it to, off to me in a really great way i i love new hampshire um but there is like a very distinct vibe to it um and i i feel like i had to set it in a place outside of um you know my home state just to have like a little bit of that distance 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. What about it exactly do you think gives it that vibe? Just the fact that you don't live in it or something else? Um, a little bit of both. There, there's, uh, there, there, there is kind of a, this like, kind of like fuck you attitude that kind of permeates uh, the state to a degree. Uh, my wife is from New Hampshire and she'll say that as well too. Um, and, and, and a big, a big part of it is that it does feel like, uh, parts of it have, are a little bit more open. They're undeveloped. Um, there are a lot more, it's like small, like have like pocket, like towns and communities, um, that are a little bit like removed from like a central hub or like a very developed like town or city. Um, obviously New Hampshire has cities, but you know, there, there are the parts that are like really captivating where I've like spent a lot of time with are like apart from that. Um, and it, it's, it's just very compelling. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful area, but there, there is this kind of vibe. Cool. Now I'm going to sound super stupid because when I was in school and whenever uh, the topic of geography would uh, get brought up, I would go, ah, I don't need to know about maps, and I would just oh. tune out. So it's like every you, state. I'm right there with you, man. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Good. <laughs> it's like every like state in uh, New England. Are they all like all like drivable? Like within one day, like you could just go through them all. Is that how small yeah. everything is? Yeah, definitely. You you can like I. Yeah, you can like you can. Um, if you go start at like the bottom, like I think it should take you a day to get to the, the top. Like again, like I'm not too bad. I, I'm not too good with it, but I've I've been to. I'm also in Massachusetts, so it's like right in the middle. Um, but you can you can get to like every of the New England states uh, within a day, like from any of the New England states. That's pretty cool, man. Like, I grew up at the, the tip top of Indiana, so I was right. I could go into like Illinois or uh, Michigan and shit like that if I wanted to growing up. But now I live in central Texas and uh, it's, uh, it's a wasteland. Like, if I drive in any direction, I will still be in Texas by the end of the day. It's vastly different from New England. <laughs> Right, right. No, it's it's enormous, which is something I only learned recently when I was trying to tell someone about. It. It's like, oh, did you catch this thing in like in like Austin or something. Like, I'm I'm nowhere near Austin. There's no way that I can make that. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, discovered that when I took a bus to Texas when I moved to. I did no research ahead of time. I just said, you know what, Texas, let's do that. And I hopped in a bus and we entered the, the state line. I thought, okay, I'm almost to my destination. And like half a day later, we made it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I was terrified. <laughs> anyway, speaking of uh, terrifying settings, you wanted to talk about spooky Massachusetts and a uh, why? Well, why did this come to mind? Like, what do you have to say about it? Uh, I mean, I think that's, I mean, at least this is kind of egotistical, but tying into um, my own work, I, I think that, that that's just kind of like the root of a lot of what I do is just the, the kind of the history, um, the strangeness and like the, the overall like vibe around uh, Massachusetts. And yeah, I, I haven't necessarily like, I haven't lived anywhere outside of Massachusetts. I haven't, um, I've visited places, but like they're, so like I'm biased, but there does seem to be something very specific about New England and Massachusetts that attracts a lot of like legends that has a, um, there's like a, it, it's one of the like older parts of the colonized country. Um, so there's like a lot of history there. Um, I, I grew up in the same town as uh, Emily Dickinson. I like lived that like maybe like a few miles down the road from the Emily Dickinson house. Um, there's uh, one of the towns that's like maybe 45 minutes away from me is was the, uh, in, the inspiration for uh, the town of Dunwich, H.P. Lovecraft's Dunwich Horror. Um, it, it just feels like baked into uh, the state and the culture. Um, 
and, and I, I always want to talk about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> like when I think of, I have never visited any of the states in New England. So, like when I think about it, I think, okay, yeah, Lovecraft. I think of uh, the Salem witch trials. I think of the fact that so many writers in this genre seem to live around you, mm-hmm. and there's something attracting all of you guys to write spooky fiction and i i don't know what that is but i want you to, to tell me teach me <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i'm not entirely sure what it is but i i can just kind of like talk about um uh, some of the some of the kind of the strange things around here um so I, I have a few topics um that like i have there's one that is that i need one place that i need to get out to that we can talk about too because i've just like read some stuff about um but I guess we can start anywhere. We, we've got like the Northampton State Hospital, uh, the Hoosick Tunnel, um, and the Eunice Williams Bridge. Not sure if there's any, any of those that jumped out to you to, as a starting point. Or are or, or any of those places that you've heard about? No, I have not, but uh, I'm a big fan of Bridges. So like, if you want to begin with that, that's fine as a jumping off place. I, was, that a, was that a pun? A jumping off place a bridge i don't know jesus christ go there on there we go there <laughs> we go rolling with it <laughs> um so the uh eunice williams bridge is probably like one of the lesser known spots um it's uh, located in this town of greenfield where i lived for uh several years it's where i wrote the majority of negative space it's also it's a lovely lovely and very kind of eerie town um but uh, the Eunice Williams Bridge, it's this uh, uh, colonial bridge, uh, covered bridge, um, that is named after a uh, woman who was uh, killed um, in uh, 1704 uh, during this march that uh, the French army uh, and the Abenaki and uh, allies from the Abenaki and Mohawk tribes um, had captured colonists and were marching them to Canada. Um, and uh, this woman, Eunice, was, uh, was, was killed at the side of this river. Um, and so there's a, this urban legend that goes since then that if you go to the bridge and in your car, you park there, you shut off all of the lights, you turn off the car, um, you might see her apparition uh, looking for her children. So of course we had to go and do this. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I've done that a couple of times with my friends. It's a little, it's a little sketchy because it's a one way bridge, um, and you have to shut your lights off to officially do that so, at night, so no one can fucking see you coming, um, or like no one who's coming can see you park there. So that's real sketchy and kind of dangerous. But like you, you're you're able you have like pretty good visibility of if other people are coming, you can see headlights, um, et cetera. Um, but you go out to this bridge, you, me and my friends, we went out there, we uh, parked on it. Um, we were really stoned. So of course we were like jumping at any little thing that was, that we were seeing or hearing. Um, you know, nothing really happened, but there is, you know, as there always is when you go out looking for it, there's this vibe and there's this um, feeling there. Um, what's brilliant about it is that there's uh, this rushing river underneath. And do you know about the uh, phenomena of, um, you know how uh, people's brains are kind of, um, we, we, we seek out patterns even if there aren't ones there. So um, if there's white noise going, we'll uh, supposedly hear voices in the white noise because yeah, yeah. we're just trying to make sense of it. What's really brilliant about the Eunice Williams Bridge is that you have this rushing river underneath that's creating this white noise. <laughs> so you start, especially if you're out there in the middle of night, like looking for ghosts and very, very high, um, you'll start hearing like voices in there and it's really cool it's really interesting um the way that the light plays there is once you shut off your headlights it almost looks like an entirely different road that's ahead of you um it like looks like the road transforms from uh, a paved road to this like dirt road from so it like looks like, almost like you have like 
gone back in time suddenly. Um, wow. And less, well, something thrilling, too, about being in a vehicle, like, in pitch darkness without any headlights on. I, like, I, I've done that a few times while, like, driving across the country late at night on a highway, and I'm the only vehicle around. Like, just for a few seconds, I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to live life like a lunatic, and I'll just flick everything off for a few minutes. Not a few minutes, a few, like, seconds. And just to live in this complete fucking darkness. And it's really strange and thrilling, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, in, in Texas, there's like, I, I don't know, but like, I'm, I guess I'm asking, there's like long stretches of like empty road that. Yeah, like country you, roads, desert roads. Yeah. Yeah, where you, can, where you have like really good visibility of if there's anyone coming so you can like do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, up here it's 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 all wind. All of the rural roads are like windy as hell. So it's like <laughs> you know, you, you can't, like you, there's no there's like no like real like aside from the highway. There's like no real like straight roads around here. So it's like it's, it's suicide trying to do that. But yeah. um, it's like living in fucking negative space. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so that, that, that's essentially the Eunice Williams bridge, um, was really kind of fascinated by it again, especially because I like lived three minutes away from it. So we could just, we would just, we, that's how we would spend sometimes some of our, some of our Saturdays was just like going and checking out, like doing different runs at the, we'd go park there for a little bit, drive, come back the other way, park there a little bit and drive a little bit more and come back. It, it's just, it's a good, it's a good way to spend an evening with some good friends. And yeah. Them. Did anyone ever get like fucking smashed? Because I yeah, assume yeah. it wasn't just you doing this. But oh, definitely of, yeah. not. Well, uh, well, there was uh, the, something that like w- one of the times that we went there, something really sketchy happened that like I really couldn't tell. There was um on the other side of the bridge, there were uh, two cars parked. Um, and they were there for a long time. We were kind of like just wondering like what the hell was going on with them. Um, and suddenly they start like flicking like all of their lights on, like b- like both of the cars flicking their lights on, like strobing them like back and forth. Um, I'm not sure if they were like just trying to fuck with us. And like we were driving by and we couldn't really see anyone around. Um, so that's weird. They, they were really tripped out cars too. I'm not sure if they were like going out racing anywhere or something but um so you didn't see anyone inside them either yeah we, we, were, we were just you have like that doesn't necessarily like mean anything <laughs> like we were kind of like going by we were looking but they were like flicking the lights on like so quickly but it was like all of the lights it wasn't just headlights it was like the inside lights as well too it was yeah. weird yeah that's yeah. some alien shit yeah definitely definitely <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, what else you got Phil? me Okay, um, I'll do uh, the the Hoosick Tunnel, um, which is, uh, I've been up there like a few times. Um, That's a little bit, uh, that's like north of Greenfield, uh, that place where the Eunice Williams Bridge is. And uh, so that's a, so the Hoosick Tunnel is a, uh, like a five mile a train tunnel through a mountain. Um, I like that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it was, uh, they started building in 1851. Um, they, they, it took 24 years to build it. Um, it I, I, one of, uh, one of my friends, his great grandfathers had actually worked on it. Um, but uh, d- during the construction, uh, it, like, uh, like 200 workers died. Um, and like, it was, because of that, they, they nicknamed it the bloody pit. Um, there were like victims, like, uh, workers died from like explosions, like black powder explosions, et cetera. Um, and just wow. like, pulled this, yeah, no, no, it, 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 it was a really grisly, grisly, grisly scene. So and, my, my oh, first yeah. question before you go on, is all a movie or a book called the bloody pit about this fucking construction? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, and if so, are you going to rent it? What's, what's, I mean, <laughs> maybe. that sounds really good. Yeah, no, no, totally, totally. I'm sure that um, I'm sh- someone has to have like gleaned some um, inspiration from that. It's, it's just too rich for that. Um, but it's wild. Like, like, so like the worst thing, the worst thing that happened here um, was so 
as they were building this, they they needed um, a place for all of the fumes to go. So they built this uh, enormous central chain, this uh, this this uh, shaft up the middle of the mountain in the middle of uh, the tunnel. Um, so they were like dig digging this exhaust shaft um, when a uh, and then like one of the lanterns like ignited like some of the toxic fumes and there was this enormous explosion there the, the shaft collapsed um you know like 13 of the workers like were trapped um and like were being like struck by falling iron um and then like the water pumps like all broke the it started the it started filling with water people were drowning uh the worst part of it is that months later uh they found when they were like excavating it they found a raft that had been built they thought that everyone had died uh in the initial incident but there had been survivors who had built a lap uh, built a raft um that they like clung to and they ended up dying there um so that's pretty horrific uh I am so glad I invited you on this podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here. I, again, I, I, you know, this this stuff's my heart. I love this. It's like one of the reasons I stay in Massachusetts. I love this shit. So the so the Houston Tunnel is like still running. It's still a uh, it's an in use uh, train tunnel um, that goes through this mountain, uh, and you can go to the mouth of it. And again, like the vibe there is just the vibe and the feeling like the actual like physicality of being there is so strange because you'll go there in the summer and i don't know why i'm sure that there's a rational explanation for it but it's so cold around the mouth the outside of the tunnel um there there's uh there's all these like fumes that are uh lifting up it's like foggy with fumes and you look into this tunnel and it's just pitch black there because it goes on for like five miles and what's crazy is that you can walk it, like um, you can actually walk it. Uh, it's incredibly dangerous to do, to do so because again, it's active. But um, the first time we had gone up there, there was like this really wild fella who had come up there and it was like, hey, you guys ever like walk that? And it's like, you can do that? It's like, yep, yep, you, you can do that. It's like, what if a train comes? It's just, just cling on to the side. It's a hell of a ride. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. Um, so I take it you haven't walked it. No, no, I, I've never gone more than like maybe I don't know, like a, a couple of dozen feet in, um, because it's like you get in there and it's just pitch black, like, and you know, it, it's really, really terrifying. So much like much like maps, I don't know a lot about trains either, but I feel like maybe the way to go is wait until a train passes and immediately begin walking. Like how how often do trains like go on the same track? Is yeah. it always the same train or well, multiple trains? I don't know these things. Right, right. I, I and I'm I'm sure that you'd be able to find a um, find a schedule somewhere. I, I think. Um, the main concern with like walking it is because it takes so long because it's because it's the five miles that like there um might not be an opportune time but i know but there are people who've walked it definitely um and they all yeah. died yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow that's uh that's terrifying but i yeah i'm certainly. so glad i don't live by you because like now all i want to do is go into this tunnel and yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm slow I would not make it yeah no it, it, it's 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 uh that's I mean that's probably the most frightening thing about being there is it's um it's the same thing of when you stand at like the lip of a cliff or like a tall building where there you there, there's that it's compelling you to like go in like you want to go in you feel like something else is kind of pushing you to go in it's just like you want to like you want to experience that you want to see what this like this place the site is um but 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 man it's 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 a it's a risky bid it's a very risky <laughs> bid i yeah what the hell is with that that need to do that because like 
sometimes when I go on a, a long walk with like my stepkid, we go through, we go past uh, many like drainage pipes and shit like that, that run throughout the whole city. And he's always like, come on, let's crawl into one of these and see where it goes. I'm always like, no, we can't do that. But secretly I'm thinking, yeah, we should, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Well, I've, I've been talking with, um, I, this has come up a few times, like in some conversations this past week uh, about, um, uh, how how old is uh he's 12 son? he's 12. 12 yeah so that's that's like the perfect age right there of um it, like it, i i think that you and i are like uh similar ages but like uh we kind of grew up with um you know a big a big part of culture and like pop culture emerging was the idea of like portals especially in like uh, young people culture and like and horror in the 80s like the idea of these uh you know, coming across like rips in reality and like, you know, like portals to other places and other spaces. And um, I think, I, th I feel like that's kind of, that's, that's like part of it where it's like you, you, you see a threshold, you see the, the opening to a place that you can't see the end of. And there's this like promise of it taking you to like somewhere else. Yeah, like even even the threat of like going through it and finding out on the other side is something that unravels everything I thought was true about reality and maybe even kills me. It's also pretty exciting. Like I want, Absolutely. I kind of want that to happen. Absolutely, there, there there's something very seductive about that. It's it's so so seductive, um, <laughs> and like and and Massachusetts is just filled with places like that. So it's like, there's always, there's, there's all of these kind of like thresholds of promise. Um, the only, the only thing that really prevents like me in Texas from doing too much, like, okay, what's inside this creepy cave is unlike like the Midwest and New England, we have a lot of fucking deadly snakes just hanging out. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. There's, <laughs> And I'm terrified of just like crawling into a, a nest of snakes. Yeah, no, for real, for real. I mean, like we we've got like bears and stuff, but they'll like stay away. And, and you know, like it, like, but like, but yeah, no, like you know, like venomous snakes and like this is going to be a very ignorant question, but are are there scorpions and throughout? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, awesome. you guys, you guys got fucking scorpions. Like we we don't have any of that shit like that. Like so I'll tell you about my uh, introduction to fucking scorpions when I moved to this state. Uh, I didn't see one for like I don't know maybe two yields, and uh, I was gonna drive my family to the uh, the yield field because they were going to visit family in uh, California. I was staying home, but uh, I put my pants on for that day, and I thought, damn, what the hell is that like itching against my my right thigh? And I thought, ah, it's nothing. So I I, I began driving. I had uh, basketball shorts on, by the way, so really loose pants. Uh, and I'm driving, and I feel something like itchy on the my left calf so originally i felt it on my right thigh now it's on my left calf so i reached down while i'm driving and it feels like the plastic from a slice of cheese is stuck to me somehow oh. i pick i pick it up as i'm driving and i look and i'm holding a fucking scorpion by the tail and i oh, scream God. i throw it somewhere in the vehicle almost wreck and we all just like ran out of the vehicle screaming but that thing would have had to travel like across my junk to get to my left leg yeah yeah that's a nightmare that's that's <laughs> terrible i uh yeah i'm like fucking indiana jones with those things i mean just don't get me close to them at all yeah no fair enough I, i'm right there with you <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah I, I i i'm very thankful to have um to live in a climate like this year um you know live in a climate that um you know, systematically kills all of the uh, insects like on a yearly basis. Though I know that was a, a very different um, case with that um, in Texas this year. Yeah, I haven't seen too many uh, things that will kill me if I step on it this year. Yeah, no, not no, yet. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh. Wow. Okay, so uh, anything else about this uh, fucking five mile tunnel that I am definitely going to go into one day? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything else I can really, uh, really think of. Not off the top of my head. Um, there is a with uh, just talking, like going back to our talk a little bit about um, 
portals and uh, you know gateways to different places. There, there, I've never been up here because I've been up there by the because by the, by the time that I found out about it, um, it kind of like already become a thing, and that like you know lots of people were going to go see, and like if you tried to go up there, there were all these cops posted up to <laughs> that would stop you already. Um, but it's a great name. There's this uh, place, Spider Gates, um, in Massachusetts, where you know the legend that I had heard was that if you you go up there and there's all of these, it's an old cemetery. There's all these wrought iron gates with uh, like fences with like spiders on them, and if you go through the gates in the correct order, it'll you'll end up. It, it opens up the gate to hell. Um, which I just like, I, I've always loved that. That's like, you just imagining sort of like you go through this process and you end up in this other place. Um, everything that I've heard about the place is that if you actually go up, it's actually a really pleasant place. It's just really kind of nice. It's like, it's, um, there are like wrought iron, like spider gates, but they're like very tasteful. Um, and like I, the, when I, I had been, uh, I had heard about this. I was like telling a like friend of a friend, oh, we're thinking of going that. And it was like, oh dude, like I went up there with a friend and like we got stopped by the police like immediately. And, just, like, and they were just like, let me guess, you're trying to go to spider gates, aren't you? So <laughs> that, that wasn't, that didn't, didn't end up being worth it, but that was- uh, So they I, won't let you proceed? No, no, like mo most of these places, um, like Hoosick Tunnel, like you're not supposed to walk there, but you can go to the lip and that's that's fine. Um, and like the Eunice Williams Bridge is open, but um, there are definitely like spots where that are like, you have to either like sneak in or off limits, which, which will actually bring me to the next topic. Yes. <laughs> which is uh, the, the Northampton uh, State Mental Hospital, which, uh, which no longer exists. It was uh, demolished and um, it, like several, I forget exactly when, like maybe like a decade and a half ago. Um, but uh, so I was born um, in the town of Northampton. Do you know, uh, do you know Matthew Bartlett? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's yeah, uh, yeah. He, so, so Leed, Leeds is uh, Northampton, essentially. Um, we were like, uh, so like I, I was born there. Like I live, like right now I live like 12 minutes from there. Um, and like I've worked there several times and uh, there was, uh, it's kind of like uh, sort of in Northern Western Mass, that's kind of like, it's kind of like a hub, uh, like, you know, large town slash small city college town etc um but yeah there there was the this uh uh state mental hospital there that was uh it, it started in like 18 like the 1850s um it closed down in um i want to say the like the mid 80s early 90s um, lots of like terrible abuses that were happening there, et cetera, as was the case with, um, you know, state hospitals, like typically. Yeah, show me um, one that was nice and friendly. Exactly, exactly. Right. Absolutely. Um, I had done some social work for a little bit. I, I, I knew some people who had like um, been patients there um, and it's just like a really, really nasty place and like nasty time. But um but anyway, so it, it closed down, it got abandoned, and you could sneak into it. Um, and so there was, so my friends and the first time that like my friends and I had like tried to do that because it's, um, uh, we were just like really, really compelled. We found instructions on the internet as a way to like the way to sneak in. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It, the, I love the, the, it. Yeah, no, this was kind of like a destination. It was, it was, a, it was really big with like, um, it was a very big like urban exploration um, destination. Wait, before you continue, how did yeah. you uh, find like these uh, instructions? Like, are you Googling like how to break into this asylum? Or are I, you like, did you, it's a little website about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, no, there, there, there was like a website that was like, that was like going around. It was like a, it was like an FAQ document essentially. <laughs> like one of those like old text documents. Yeah. Um, and so it, it wasn't me who had found it. It was, uh, it was our friend, Dan, who had found it. And, uh, 
so the first time we went there, we kind of just like scoped it out. Um, we we had gotten like we gotten like really stoned, so we were really paranoid because there, because it had like a active patrol like constantly. Like part of, part of the way of getting in is you like climb up this hill, you duck down, you wait for the patrol car to go by. They stop for a little bit and then they drive on and then you can like run up there. So like the first time we go, we're stoned, so we're super paranoid. And we just kind of like, we wuss out on it and we head back. It's like, oh, we can't do that. So we got drunk the next time because we'll just have all the confidence in the world that way. Uh, so we did. And so you sneak up this hill, you drop onto the ground, like in all these like pricker bushes. <laughs> and uh, you know, that you see these this, uh, this patrol car come around, it stops, it goes on, you run up further. And so you, you go up through and, and it looks like something out of, um, it's like, like the fields look like something out of Night of the Living Dead. It's just like all overgrown. It's, um, I mean, like what you'll describe me now sounds like a scene straight out of negative space. I mean, they do the same the, thing, the, don't the, they? The instructions for getting into the abandonments are the exact same instructions for getting into, uh, <laughs> the, into the North yeah. State Hospital. That was absolutely uh, pulled from that. Okay. Um, yeah 100 percent um so like you go into there and it's just like it's so dark because there's no artificial there's no like artificial light or anything and there's just it's it was an enormous building this is like a say hospital that like had thousands and thousands of people like living in there like you know like packed in um and it, so it's just this enormous fucking building like in the middle of the night like dark as hell uh, wrapped by a chain link fence and the instructions that we had it like says like if you go around this way you'll like find like there's a place where you can pull back the chain link and sneak in to to it where again like you're still really exposed um so we go through there and then like the instructions say okay if you go around the building here you'll find like a window broken out of the wall and, and it was the weirdest thing so we find this <laughs> this place where um, it's not like a broken window. It, it, it's like the window frame had been pulled out of the wall. It's just like crumbling brick. Um, you go down into it, you hop down into what's essentially like a little closet, um, which is the most bizarre thing. You walk out of the closet and then it, then right across from that is the morgue. Like it's, you see a, this a huge metal door with a sign for the morgue right there. It's like the most bizarre, eerie thing. How um, how strange must it be like to think about like a long time ago, how many people were trying to come up with a plan to break out of this place and heal you while breaking into it? That's such an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Like there had to have been because um, I'm sure that like some people succeeded as well too. Um, but like, yeah, when you're inside this place, like, and you like see it, it's like, this is like, this is like a prison. This is like set up like a prison. It's like, it's so bleak and it's so bizarre. Um, anyway, like we, we went like, once you got through there, you pretty much have access to the entire hospital, which is so wild. Like we, um, we found a, uh, a piano overturned in like a stairwell that you could play. There's like, well, there was old sheet music with like crayon writing, like um, from. If you had played that, you would have definitely summoned something. Oh yeah, no, we probably <laughs> hear that we did. We, I mean, we were also like young and like irreverent and like completely like, it, <sighs> It's like, it's 100% like, okay, like this is how the movie begins. You go you come <laughs> to this, like, this site and you, you transgress upon the, um, you know, the people who've been harmed by the space. Um, and uh, It's funny like, how like normal day life, I don't really believe in like anything really supernatural. But like, if you tell me this, I would 100% believe like, yeah, you, you definitely summon a, a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm the same. I'm like, I'm pretty like agnostic, leaning towards a more material perspective of it. But then it's like it, there, you do have those experiences. Where it's just like I, I, I've seen how this movie ends. Come on, like you yeah. know, the, 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 <laughs> no, no good can come of this. Um, we found this theater. Do you remember? Do you remember this this god awful Robert Downey Jr. vehicle uh, in Dreams from? 
the uh, late no. 2000s. Late. It's a film that was shot around here. It was, I forget who else was in that, um, but it was shot in Western Massachusetts um 1999 with yeah Annette Benning and Robert Downey Jr. okay um and so part of it was shot in the Northampton State Mental Hospital and we found the set uh to this film <laughs> um, that was there um which was which was really strange and bizarre especially because it was it was like um so you have this like decaying mental hospital and then inside that you have this like very fabricated set of a decaying mental hospital right there. So the um, movie came out in 99, you said, so it was probably filmed in 98. When, when is it that you were going in? Pardon, I'm sorry. Oh, this, so we, this, we were going in in like um, mid 2000s. Okay, okay. Like, this was when we were like in our like early 20s. Um, were you finding like like scripts like what was inside this uh movie set oh it, so it's a, it's like where it, it's like there's this one place where there's uh one part of the movie where um like robert downey jr has like scribbled all of these things all over the walls um and we and that's that's what we found um yeah yeah um so like didn't, didn't find anything like scripts or any or like any equipment like uh from the movie or anything but uh it was uh yeah we, we found this like where the scene was shot from from it um i find it funny that he just like actually wrote on those walls and they were like yeah fuck it I'm just gonna leave it right right well like well here's the here's the weird thing about it is that like they brought in like walls like like it was it, 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 it feels like they could have shot this scene anywhere because they had built a set to look like a decaying <laughs> mental hospital. Like it did, but it didn't look like any of the actual decaying mental hospital. It, it was so weird. Like, I, I don't really understand like what the purpose of that was. Um, How strange, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it D- doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but anyway, like that became kind of like, we have got uh, obsessed with like sneaking into this place. like a whole bunch and um one time like a friend found like a um uh, like my friends were like uh my musician friends were like doing like recording in there and stuff like that uh uh no evp or anything that came up but uh but yeah that, that was essentially that but it's like you know again it's like this like palpable feeling of like absolute like dread and like coldness and like a lot of that is just from the atmosphere of like going in us like you know expecting it to be like this like frightening thing um but it is yeah it is a wild space a wild space um have you ever seen uh, session nine? Oh yeah many times yeah so so that 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 was a that was filmed at another state hospital in massachusetts that yeah i had i had only gone to um after uh it had been converted into like apartments and condos um but there is like still a uh a patient uh graveyard behind there that we had found oh um, my god wow. yeah yeah certainly yeah with uh session nine we actually did an episode about that movie a few months back on this podcast but yeah like some of the behind the scenes stuff on that movie was nuts just like they had to film on only certain spaces of the building because the folds were just caving in yeah yeah no that, that was another thing was um as we were going it, it was the same with like like on top of like all the like you know scary like you know metaphysically scary stuff there was the um there was the fact that was a dangerous building filled with asbestos and like with like you know like floors having like caved in um it it was so it's like you definitely had to be careful there um but yeah really wild really wild yeah that's about it for uh the northampton state hospital um uh and then, like the one, like last, like little thing that I have. Have you ever heard of the Bridgewater Triangle? No, but I, I want, I want to now. Cool, cool. Um, th- so the, here's a place that I've never been to. This is on, this is on my wife and I's have to do list. Um, it's a, uh, the Bridgewater Triangle is, uh, I think it like encompasses this uh, state park in um, 
the town of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And not a lot, like I don't have any like anecdotal experience, but um, I've heard like so many awesome things about this place of that it's like this site for um, like a site of like UFO sightings, um, lots of uh, lots of cryptid sightings. Like people have like, uh, there've been uh, lots of uh, Thunderbird sightings there and uh, uh, Puckwoodgies, which are you familiar with Puckwoodgies? My best guess is some type of uh, Pokemon. No, no. <laughs> 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 oh, I will, well, oh, like, well, maybe. Um, so, so Pukwudgies are, and I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation, but it's, um, it's a, uh, a, a creature from uh, Wampanoag uh, folklore of these, like, I forget if they're covered in fur, but like they're like these, like two feet tall, like little people. Like they're, it's almost like the, um, it, it's like in some ways uh, similar to, I think, like what are like the, the small people in like Iceland and uh, things okay. like that and like fairies. Um, but they're these like, these like small little like trickster people who supposedly try to lure you into harm or like- I love to, that. Yeah, or, or try to like convince you to like commit suicide. Like there's, there's um, places around like Bridgewater like cliffs and stuff where like some people say that like certain suicides were because of the puck wedgies um and like or that there's like like people will say that like if you go out to the Bridgewater triangle and like and you'll encounter them and they'll like just try to sort of like they'll act a little friendly and try to like lure you like further into the woods to a place where you can get trapped or something um so we're hoping to go out there like maybe the summer or something this has been like the past several years we've been wanting to finally hit this place up are you hoping to get trapped i'm hoping to like <laughs> i'm hoping to to uh to uh be desirable enough to be trapped you know i i just i just want to see them try you know <laughs> like do you think something like that is like a day job for these things or that's just all they do certainly i mean like you got to have a hobby like of some sort like, you know, like you, if you're, you know, like, especially in like the really rural, like Western Massachusetts, I'm sure that's just kind of like trying to figure out some like way to entertain themselves, you know? I always love like, like trick stool uh, things. It just still so entertaining to me. Like all they do is just go around tricking people. Like I would be great at that. I love tricking yeah. people. It's, it, that's really like the best of like the mythological and like folkloric kind of um, like archetypes. Like I, I like I am right there with you. I like I don't have like very much trickster spirit myself, which probably makes me admire it more. Um, but yeah, I, I I love that shit. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and like it also at uh, Bridgewater, there's been like a bunch of um, reported like animal mutilations. Um, oh man. <laughs> And like people have like talked about like there was um uh you know like and like there was uh, uh like so like a lot of people have been like thinking it's like oh this is part of a cult or like ritual sacrifice or something like that and like um this is like as recent as like the 90s too like so it's like a little bit of that like lovecraftian like folklore creeping into it as well it's like creeping into yeah reality or like altering people's perceptions of like an animal getting like nabbed by some coyotes, which is most likely the actual. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, it's either just like a, a wild animal attack. Well, it's like two drunk kids like trying to one up each other. I'm like, oh yeah, well, watch what I can do. I I have no compassion at all. I'll do this, and the animal yeah. kids like, you know what? I'll do it too. Absolutely, and and there there is no shortage of um, drunk board kids in uh, Massachusetts. So it's always being replenished. I, I'm sure that's everywhere, but. I, you yeah. see it a lot, I see it a lot around here and had been that at one point yeah um, same I mean and then I imagine like they even like the idea of like yeah it is some type of a cult thing let's make everybody think that because like not to get too deep into this topic but like you could draw as many penises as you want like on the side of a wall but if you do a pentagram that's going to get someone's attention yeah oh totally totally there, there's um this funny thing that I heard on this um, this uh, podcast uh, I was listening to where uh, this guy was saying like when he was like a teenager, like his parents would like 
warn him about like, you know, like be careful out there. There's some like weird kids doing some like weird shit. And he was just like, I, I am those kids. Like me and my, fr- like we're the ones doing, are the weird kids doing that weird <laughs> shit out there. Like you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. That like, that's something similar to me. Like at my school, but growing up, like there was a thing going on, like, yeah, there was some fucking strange kids who walk around with the anarchy signs drawn on little Chuck tables and like, don't go by them. And that was me. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> People talking about me and I'm fine. I, I'm just going to go home and like watch Saved by the Bell. Exactly, exactly. So like, um, this is a, this is kind of on top, but off topic, like, um, you know, the movie, The Gate? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, like one of my all-time favorites. One of which is that I I deeply appreciate about that is like accurately depicting like the weirdo metalhead kids. Yes. It's just just these nice nerds, really. That's all all it is. (laughs) They just want to play with rockets. Right, exactly. (laughs) Absolutely. It's like the only like movie from that that didn't like buy into the satanic panic thing and like, you know, actually like portrayed it like how it actually is. Yeah, like... I mean, it's so fucked up. I mean, that I imagine that's still going on now, at least a little bit in small towns, because like growing up like in a small town in Indiana, like my friends and I, we'd really into like all that shit. We would mostly just want to walk to like the gas station and get like a few like Jones sodas and just sit down on a bench and just like talk about life. But then we would have like cops come up and like, what are you doing? What are you up to? Like, Nothing. Yeah. Go away. No. Absolutely. I, I mean, that, that was like, that was, that was life. Like when I was like a teen and like, I, I have like, it like sucks so much. Like what I hear about now, like, because I, I have like friends who have like teenage children now and like, they're just getting like, they're getting like picked up, like just for like walking to the gas station every fucking Saturday. Like, and it's like, they're not doing anything. They're just, they're just being kids and stuff. It's like, like there's a there's this kind of like zero tolerance on just kind of like kids existing in <laughs> like in and around places right now. It's, yeah, if they're outside, do if they're outside at all, like not with a, a grown up, they must be up to something this uh, really bad. Right, right. Kind of stupid and frustrating and annoying. Anyway, was that uh, all the places you had in mind to talk about? Yeah, yeah, I think that that's cool. good. You live in a haunted place. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> let's be fill the end of this. Let's talk a bit more about negative space because okay. like I mean I I love it a lot and I've tried like recommending it out to a lot of people and it's I think it's kind of an easy book to recommend, but also at the same time you you have to like say not a lot about it like how i've been describing it to people is i say it's about a a small town and the kids in it who are trying to cope around a bizarre suicide epidemic going on like how, how do you advertise it that that's that's pretty much like the best way that i i have like you know like the book's been out a year now and i'm still trying to figure out like what the elevator pitch is um because um, and thank you for saying that it's an easy book to recommend. I, I, I don't necessarily see it as that myself. Yeah, um, I, uh, I maybe misspoke because it's really heavy. <laughs> yeah, no, certainly. I, I definitely, uh, you know, like, I and I like, you know, I'm fine if like, you know, it's not like, I, I understand that like a lot of what I'm doing is like very niche and like for a very like, it's, um, it's for like people who it's for people who like a very specific type of thing and that's that's fine um yeah my uh, uh my friend uh josh shablinski he's the one who re- he wouldn't shut up about it so I mean, him and i we tend to like the same stuff oh yeah he's been a hell of an advocate I, yeah absolutely yeah and uh yeah i mean i don't know why i waited so long to pick it up but i'm glad he wouldn't shut up about it and that's why i'm not shutting up about it either. i mean this is such a good book and I, you have what one or two little books out as well yeah, I, I have. Um, yeah, I have one other book out, um, Amygdalatropolis. And how do you say it? Uh, Amygdalatropolis. Okay, yeah, I've seen it spelled out, but I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, that's fair. <laughs> what What does it mean? Do you want to tell me oh, a bit about that? So, so that that's that's a, um, uh, a like a portamento or however that's pre- pronounced of uh, amygdala. So like the the part of the brain that is like. It's like the ancient part of the brain that like triggers like the fight or flight and like aggression 
um, and like Metropolis. So it's like a city oh. like built okay. around Amygdala. Hey, um, what is the uh, elevator pitch on that book? Oh, um, I always like to say that it's a, a story about a boy who got everything he ever wanted. Um, but it's, uh, but the the more accurate description is that it's um, about a uh, a teenage boy who's who kind of becomes who becomes uh, completely isolated and only uh, is engaged uh, with um, you know like uh, you know uh, toxic and uh, you know, uh, um, like message boards and oh like yeah, that, okay, like cool. Oh, well, that sounds right up my alley. I, oh, cool, cool. Uh, I spent awesome. way too much time on message builds as kids. <laughs> I, I, excellent, excellent. That's a book that I really have a lot of trouble recommending to people. So, so yeah, maybe. <laughs> why? Why is that? Because of the the filmmaking of it, or is it is it darker than negative space somehow? <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. It, it's just like oppressive and like vile, um, and like it, it's like. It, it's just um yeah uh, and like uh after after this like if you want to send me uh your address i'd, I'd be happy to send you a copy um, oh nice see see the bonuses of having a podcast folks people there just you go. books that's why there i do go. this <laughs> <laughs> sweet uh anything else you want to talk about like something you have anything else coming out in the the, the neil future anything like that going on yeah um right now i'm working um I'm I'm doing some writing for my filmmaker friend uh, Nick Verdi, um, who we we worked on a short film together um, last year. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've been doing some uh, some writing, particularly like uh, voiceover writing, to help with uh, his newest film, um, which I, I can't really like. I, I'm gonna I'll let him announce it, but it's uh, we're doing like a very low budget. Uh, horror movie um I, I've kind of been like describing it as um maniac meets uh I stand alone um so uh he he actually just wrapped up uh principal photography this past uh last weekend um so he's he's starting with like the editing and like go be doing like a few other things uh yeah so like I'm really excited about that and you're you're do, you're working on you're doing some filmmaking yourself right yeah, well, I mean, I by by doing some filmmaking, I uh, wrote the screenplay and then they filmed it, and now I'm just waiting for news. <laughs> I, I'm in the same position where he, where uh, where Nick is doing all of the the hard stuff. Yeah, uh, and, and I just get to like talk with him once a week on Zoom and like figure out, and, like then I write a bunch of stuff and send it to him. And he's like, yeah, no, this is cool, and then we talk some more and I write some more stuff. So. <laughs> It's like I was involved in a lot of the editing. Like I was in the editing room for a good chunk of it. And then I went back home and they finished the editing. And then we went through many different drafts where they would send us like a, a new draft of the movie and myself and the producers would watch it and send notes. And that took like a month, month maybe two months. And we finally uh, wrapped post-production. And now we are in the process of just like trying to sell it someplace. And I have no way of being involved in that besides saying yeah sounds good and no <laughs> that doesn't sound good so it's mostly just me pacing around my uh, house just waiting for some good news to happen yeah no totally the waiting is always that the, the tough part of that but th that's awesome though that's uh, that's huge like just completing that like um you know like film like i'm really i feel really helped really lucky to have um you know like a friend who's into filmmaking and willing to like you know do the yeah. like impossible task of making a film <laughs> so i don't have to i can just tag my name i can like write his coattails a little bit yeah this stuff it gets complicated probably more complicated than geography so i'm like i'm out <laughs> yeah uh, no 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 yeah but <laughs> that how can uh folks find you online um yeah you can find me at uh br yeager um on twitter and that's mainly where I'm at. Um, you, you can buy uh, you can buy Negative Space at um, apocalypseparty.com um, through a number of different outlets. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Thanks for doing this. This was awesome. a, a great, spooky, uh, haunted episode. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it.
And that was B.L. Yeagle talking about spooky Massachusetts. Go buy Negative Space. I'm sure you have already, but in case you haven't, go buy it. It's a great book. Also, support me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Go on over to Perpetual Publishing. Buy some books. pre order Jurassic Christ by Michael Allen Rose. pre order The Flying Nun by Cody Goodfellow. Buy my books. Touch the night. We need to do something. The nightly disease. Read books. Listen to podcasts. Live spooky. Die spooky. Ha <laughs> ha.